When performing application analysis, it is important to remember that there's always two sides to every story, and possibly a lot more sides. Let's focus on the two for now with the end-to-end -end analysis. One of the sides is the client side. If we take a capture next to the client side, we're able to see the packets enter and leave the client and the performance associated with those packets, how long they took in processing. Also, we're able to determine if the client, the actual person, maybe received a phone call or didn't click uh, go or didn't click get or, you know, just was kind of sitting in front of the machine for a little while. So we're able to determine automatic processing and flows and scripts versus uh, live human interaction interface processing. But when we look at the perspective of the other side of the traffic, we're not looking at just the server alone. There's a lot of different hops along the way, a lot of different things. So we're looking from the client's perspective, when we look at the server's response time, we're aggregating all of the different network nodes amongst the path. It's also important to look at the different conversation flows. The client to server interaction may be one level at HTTP, you may have one get that flows seamlessly all the way through. However, between the client and the server going through the cloud, you may have a VPN, you may have WAN accelerators, content switches, several different factors that can improve or impede performance. When we look at the end-to-end -end analysis, it is important to focus on the two different aspects. We want to look at the client's capture, and we also really want to look at what the actual server is doing and narrow that focus to where the client is talking to. Hopefully the public facing server would be a good place to start. As we get more detailed and find out possible delays on the server side, that's where we can use a Gigastore or another hardware probe with our Gen 2 card and take multiple trace files both in the DMZ and the external DMZ or really where's appropriate for where where the appropriate points are for capture on your network. In the green lines, we see the actual flow or possible segment flows. So we may have one in wireless, two inside of the Ethernet, possibly third inside of the cloud, fourth segment talking to the public facing servers, and then they can cause a fifth, sixth, seventh, and possibly up to 30th or 40th separate conversation based on TCP and HTTP because of multi-tiered environments. That's kind of a subject that's a little bit out of the realm of this dissertation. But if we're looking at end-to-end -end analysis, it's important to show how observer can assist in this, what used to be a very copious manual task. Keep in mind that IP addresses may change as we go through different network areas. True, you may have a VPN connection, so the client's 10 dot segment may also be the core's 10 dot segment or you may have different traces in areas where the client's address has changed based on network topology. So being able to mask the 10 dot segment inside of the 172 segment as the client's conversation flow has changed with IP addresses is imperative to quickly analyze conversations. Without further ado, let's jump over to Observer. Now with Observer, we come up to our trending and analysis and drop down to the end-to-end -end server analysis. This is where we have the ability to select files to analyze, which is analogous to simply doing a file open and a file open. Rather than manually looking at a tiled Windows view, we're able to mask the trace here with a, applying IP mapping. And in this case, we have a 192, 168, and a 207, 218 segment. We're going to mask those IP addresses to provide a baseline of IP address for the two different sides. And then the processing observer is going to synchronize those traces based on the flows of the conversations within the two traces. And it'll pull out things like server detail here for server analysis. So we can see our number of clients, and we've had a pretty small, simple trace for demo purposes. The amount of connections here, 40 connections, two connections. So there's some things that you can pull apart on this view. If you're looking at, uh, say, 203 was a load balanced server segment, so all 203 servers were steering up the same content, if we turn off the other devices, we can look at the 203 segments and see that each had one client, but there were 40 connections with one and four connections on another. And then look at the amount of bytes that were being sent between these devices too. 
So we may modify our load balanced algorithms based on the performance of these devices. It's possible that 51.42 is just a faster server, so we want it to steer up more content. But if we have a load balanced algorithm based on the client and not individual connections with that client, we may want to change that. Let's get into more detailed server analysis, looking at the response times. Graphically, we can see the server's response and the network delay and highlight over and get more information. Now, it's important to point out that we are looking at two separate trace files that have been pulled inside of Observer to determine the performance of the network, the client, and the server separately. So this is much more accurate than if you're only taking a capture next to the server or only next to the client. If we look at our server load, we're able to determine the total server load for all the web servers, plus in blue we have the servers on the 203 segment. This is a great advantage when you're looking at you know, multiple different servers and trying to find out their, both their load and what the utilization is on those servers. And it's nice to see in a quick graphical format. On the left-hand side, we'll click on the end-to-end -end drill down. And this is where we can isolate the flows between the different sides. You can look for drop packets and sort in ascending or descending order from segment one to segment two. If I'm looking at segment one, here I see at the bottom a ladder diagram of the timeline in each individual flow. So this would be flow four. We can pull this down and view the time between each packet and the interaction graphically. So we can see if there's congestion, delay, packet loss. And also, the lines are color-coded. We can right-click and go over to the uh, display settings and change the settings. So if you want to look at drop packets, we have those showing in red. Retransmitted packets, magenta. So you can change the colors if you want to. And anything that eases the burden on the analyst to quickly walk through and see where there's delay. The red jumped out very quick at us, and we see that this is, in fact, a drop packet and did not make it to the other side. So here we can simply right-click on that and go to the decoded packet and pull that packet right out of a trace file if we'd like to. And in the hop summary, we'll see a graph that shows where the minimum delay time was, maximum delay time, lost packet, and average delay time. So again, with end-to-end -end analysis, we're able to take the client's perspective and the server's perspective, or possibly a couple servers doing replication. Whatever the case may be, we're able to take both sides of the story and let Observer assimilate that information along with the synchronization of the captures. It's always interesting also to look at settings here and come over to synchronization and see what the actual clock drift or time difference was in those. And it's important to note that Observer does look at the beginning to the end of a trace and assimilate all the conversation flow or under general, you can tell Observer how you want it to synchronize. As we're taking multiple captures, whether it's end-to-end -end server analysis with two, or if you go over to trending analysis, you can select multi-hop for up to 10 different capture perspectives. You can also come up to capture, and packet capture on multiple instances will allow you to remotely attach to multiple probes and start and stop the captures at the same time so you don't have to really mess around a lot with a clock drift across the large segment or across time zones. So that's end-to-end -end server analysis. We hope you'll use this feature in the product. It's a very, very powerful tool. And remember, simply go to the trending analysis, drop down to end-to-end -end server analysis, and that is where you can get started with end-to-end. -end.